Well, this morning was one of those mornings where you just wish you'd got up an hour earlier, really. Just being lazy. I set the alarm for half four, really should have set it for half three. Because there was some gorgeous mist here this morning and I missed most of it. Hmm. So where am I? So, well, first of all, I'm out today on a tour of West Norfolk. It's a Monday. It's the Monday after the holiday that we had in Devon that you'll have seen in last week's vlog. And it's my birthday. So I thought, why not? Let's get out for the day, do what I enjoy most, and come to West Norfolk. And I'm gonna do a bit of a tour. So I started here this morning at Royden Common that you may have seen me visit before in a previous vlog. This is an area of uh, Heathland, just north east of Kings Lynn. And it is famous for the, the heather that obviously begins to bloom sort of August, September time. And in actual fact, the heather is now turning. There is some heather turning now and it's just, so I think in, you know, maybe three weeks time, two, three weeks time, this will be uh, <coughs> blooming lovely. <laughs> but I just thought that there might be a little mist this morning. So I thought I'd come to Royden Common just to capture some of these lone trees in the mist. And as I was driving here in the car, it wasn't much of a sudden rise, but I could see the mist building and building. Uh, I got to the car park, there's lovely mist here. Come down here, there was still some mist, so then it's a panic to try and get a shot before the mist goes. And I took a couple of shots of the, there's a tree just as you walk down on the left hand side. I took a shot of that uh, and then took another shot of the, uh, the two trees, which I've shot again before. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it's just frustrating. It was, it's, don't get me wrong, it's gorgeous. It's still a lovely morning. It's misty, you know, it's sort of, very very quiet very peaceful very misty there's no wind uh which clearly being in the heathlands not good for midges and mosquitoes but so far they don't seem to be that bad so yeah today is about exploring west norfolk um places that i've been before some that i haven't and i'll bring you guys along so here we go I spoke too soon about those midges as the sun's now coming up or well, been up for a while but as it's getting a bit warmer they're coming alive so I think I'm going to move on from this spot soon but before I do and I hadn't long finished talking to you uh, a second ago and as I say the mist is now more or less gone but there's some really nice soft diffused light left and the tree that I shot earlier on uh, first thing this morning it's now got some really nice soft light on it. So I've got the 100 to 400 out and I just thought I'd just go in on that tree. It's isolated in the background because it's got trees behind it and there's a silver birch to the right of it. Um, but it's just about the tree, but it's more just about the light. Um, it, there isn't any directional light. It's just that sort of early morning soft diffused light, which is, which is lovely, really delicate light. So yeah, F, uh, F uh, F7.1, I think it was, um, uh, probably about, I think I'm in at about 300 mil. And yeah, we'll see what this one looks like. So I think I might just wander back through the woods to see if there's anything there on the way to the car uh, and then head on to my next destination, which is completely different to here.
So what I just mentioned there in the video was the quality of light. Um, I noticed that the softness of the light was really just making this tree glow. And you know, now I've got this back and looked at it in Lightroom, you'll see here, I've hardly edited this at all. I've just tweaked it. And this was all around the quality of the light that I got that morning, just for a fleeting moment. And it's often the case when you've got mist and the mist just gradually rises and the sun starts to come through. Now, this isn't the greatest composition in the world. You know, I'm not too keen, if I'm honest, on this tree here. And what works for me about this shot is purely the, the quality of the light. And it's as simple as that. Now, on that subject of quality of light, this is an ideal opportunity for me to show you this BenQ <laughs> Screen Bar Plus. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I've been trying to pluck up the courage to do this for ages, and I've got around to it now, and I've slotted it in here quite nicely. So yes, BenQ have sent me this screen light that goes over the top of the screen. And if I'm honest, I really like it. It is something that I had been looking at, um, I was a bit put off by the price tag, but when BenQ contacted me to say, would I have a look at it and give a, not a review, but just give my opinions on it, I said, yeah, why not? So I've got it, I've been using it for a couple of months, and it's very handy. If you're in an office that doesn't get a lot of directional light and you don't want to rely on um, artificial light sources coming through, this screen light over the top of your screen is is really good, I must admit. I'm. I think it's great, personally. Uh, it just slots over the top of the screen. It's really easy to use. Uh, it's got a USB connection with a little um, round gadget that they give you to operate it, control. You can have it set to ambient light, which automatically reads the light in the room and adjusts the light that it thinks you need on your screen. Or you can set it to the color temperature, so you can have a warm light or a cool light. Um, very simple to use, but very effective. It's not cheap, as I say, it's just over 100 quid if you want to buy it. Um, however, if you are in the market for one, I can actually recommend it. So there you go, enough of that. Let's get back to the video and you'll soon find out where I'm going next, which was a little bit different to where I left you. I told you it was going to be a little bit different and it is I'm at the sea only driven about 10 miles less than that um, I'm at Heacham and <laughs> mm, not quite what I expected so there's a jet it was there's a stone jetty with a marker post at the end of it and a steel stanchion at the front that I have seen a couple of pictures of before uh, and that's it there. <laughs> I can only see the marker boy. Now there's a couple of problems. First of all, it's high tide, which I knew it was high tide, but I didn't actually expect high tide to come up this high. I don't really know what I expected to be honest, but I just didn't expect it to be this high. So that's one problem, that the tide is far too high and there's, high and there's no uh, sign of the stone jetty at all. The other problem is, I think the steel stanchion that was there before, that I've seen in pictures, is gone. So it's literally just the, the marker post and or at the moment because the tide's so high and that's it. So it's not really doing it for me if I'm honest. I wanted, you know, at least the stone jetty to lead out to it and my plan was to do a really long exposure. Um, and just make it a really nice minimalistic shot. But yeah, that particular marker post isn't that attractive on its own. So I need to rethink this. Now, the good news is it's a glorious day. I'm on the beach. It's a Monday morning, so there's not many people about and it's my birthday. So come on, brilliant, eh? But this is supposed to be a photography vlog, <laughs> not a vlog of me enjoying myself on my birthday. So I need a plan B. I think what I might do as I join the beach up near the car park further back that way, there were some marker boys there with like the like flower pot tops on see-through things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and they looked a little bit more appealing than this one. 
So I might just go back there and just take a long exposure shot of that, just on its own minimalistic shot. It's not gonna be that exciting, but at least it's what I came for in a, in a way. really doing it for me this it's just a stick in stick in the sea with a flower pot on top <laughs> nah give me a tree any day <laughs> listen I'm here I want to do something a little bit different and I'm doing something a little bit different didn't really say I was going to enjoy it <laughs> So it's a stick in the sea with a flower pot, and I've shot the stick in the sea in the, with the flower pot in a, in a portrait orientation and a landscape orientation. How about that? The landscape orientation, I put it a little bit to the right hand side because it was leaning a little bit. So I think that helped the composition immensely. The portrait composition was more or less in the middle. I've shot it at 30 seconds, and I think I was at F13, whatever. Telephoto lens to get a little bit closer so the stick with the flower pot didn't get lost in the picture. Whichever one of these wonderful shots I like the best, I'll show you in a minute. And then I think I'm going to have some breakfast and head off to my third and final location of the morning. This is my third and final destination of this morning, and this is Snettisham, Snettisham Woods. Of course I am back in the woods. Just been to Sunny Honey on Stanton. Lovely bacon sandwich and a cup of coffee, so I'm all refreshed. And yeah, so the reason I'm here, um, not just because it's a woods, uh, and I've never been here, the, I can't remember when it was, last year sometime. Actually, it was when I took that shot of the Avenue of Trees near Holcomb Hall. Somebody messaged me to say that there was an Avenue of Trees here at Snettisham Woods. So I thought I'd pop in and have a look at it and see what it's like. And I think I found it. I think it's this Avenue of Trees behind me here. Um, now, I was gonna say, when I was standing that end and about to do a piece to camera that I didn't think today was the right conditions and I didn't really see a shot, although it's a lovely avenue of trees. But now I've come this end, there's a field in the background, which is, I don't think it's rape, but it's got yellow flower on it. So that might just add a little bit of interest and there's like a gate post heading there and a nice arching tree at the back. So I might be able to get a shot out of this one. We'll, we'll give it a go, I think, just to see what it looks like. But as I say, I've never been to this place, so I'm going to wander around here. I won't be long, you know, it's sun's out, the conditions aren't great now this time of morning, but it's nice just to have a look around at another, you know, woodland location not far from me. So right, let me get set up and I'll take this one and see what it looks like in camera. Well, I've given it a go and see what it looks like. Obviously, with the light we've got coming through here, it's quite harsh, so having to um, bracket, or not actually bracket, what I did was I've, I took an exposure for the trees uh, here under the shadow, and then took another exposure for the uh, light area at the very back where the, uh, you can't see, can you? This camera always focuses on me. Um, anyway, uh, the light area at the very back where the gate and the yellow flowers are. And then I'll just have to blend those two. So we'll see what it looks like. Um, I don't think, 
today's conditions are really going to do it justice. But it is a nice little avenue of trees. Um, it's a very worn path. Um, this is one of the main thoroughfares, I think, through this woods. Um, and there's quite a bit of graffiti on the trees, which isn't great. And there's a rope swing up that end, so <laughs> not the sort of most secluded of, uh, of avenues of trees. But anyway, we'll see what it looks like. Well, I haven't had to walk far to find another avenue of trees. So I'm not sure now whether this was the one that he meant or whether that was the one or both of them. Um, so I'll, I'll have a go at this one now. Well, sorry, I'll have a go. I've had a go at this one. This one is, is a little bit more attractive to look at, really. It's not obviously, it is still on the main track, but it's, um, it's just not as, I don't know, it doesn't feel as worn of people. It's more on the edge of the woods. And it's really quite nice. These, I think they're all beech trees. These beech trees just arch really lovely over this path here. And there's a little gap towards a path at the back. And then you've got some uh, other beeches on the left of the path here. So this one actually quite works. And I think it works better than the other one, if I'm honest. So I've tried a couple of shots of this. I've done this in a landscape and I've done this in a portrait. And um, they both look okay. The, the landscape gets in the trees here on the left. More particularly this one here, which has got a really nice shape to it that arches inwards. So that the landscape allows me to get that one in on the left. And then um, the trees here on the right hand side, uh, obviously on the right hand side of the image and then the path through to the back and the portrait one really just focuses on the main trees arching over the top with the path going through the back as well yeah we'll see see what both of them look like well unfortunately both these failed as did the first one which is why i haven't shown you that image um, i just couldn't control the highlights even though I bracketed the shot and I even blended the images together using luminosity masks to try and control the highlights, I just couldn't do it and um, everything I ended up with just looked a bit false. So I'm going to put this one down to experience. The light wasn't good enough and I'm going to come back to this location in better conditions. Uh, obviously mist will be perfect, but it was a great find and a good location to return to. Right, pretty certain this will be my last shot. <laughs> now, this, this composition, um, you could easily walk past this and I nearly walked through it. And I know, I know what it was that attracted me to it. And just let me talk you through. Um, there is an avenue of beech trees here, totally different to the ones we had earlier on. Uh, they're literally just you know, spaced out, lining this path through. But you've got the beech leaves that are overhanging the top that are coming down. And they're pointing over the top of the path. The path snakes round. The trees are nicely spaced out. They lead to a tree at the end. The light isn't too harsh. So all together, it just, it just hangs and it just hangs together quite nicely. Um, it'll just be a nice, typical summer's image summer woodland image um you know nothing spectacular but i really like it and these are the sort of shots that i really like you know and it just shows that no matter what the conditions are and you know we've got the the quite high harsh light coming through the canopy you can still make a shot you can still make a picture um so on that note i'm going to say goodbye uh for today i hope you've enjoyed today's little ramble around West Norfolk, uh, starting off at Royden Common in that mist, which was very nice. As I said earlier, just wish I'd have got up a bit earlier so I could have experienced a bit more of it. Um, then dropped off to shoot a, a stick in the water with a flowering pot on top, which wasn't a great success, but I saw the sea, which was always, which is nice. And then here to uh, Heatsham that was, and then here to Snettersham Woods. And I must admit, I'm quite pretty impressed with these woods. Um, these are, from what I've seen so far, predominantly beech woods, which is, you know, always good to, to know there's a, a reasonable beech wood nearby. So yeah, West Norfolk is a fantastic part of the UK. It really is, you know, it's in the fens. So, you know, it 
fits well in my, you know, with my channel and, and what I like to promote really, which is a different part of the UK that, that you know, typically photographers don't come to. Lots of places to explore, seas, woodlands, ancient buildings, wherever. So yeah, get yourself to West Norfolk, why don't you? <laughs> anyway, enough from me. I'm gonna grab this, wander back, and go home and open my birthday presents. <laughs> right, I'll see you all next time. You take care, and yeah, see you soon.